of Elvis Tribute Week. That's tomorrow on A Current Affair. And just when we thought that today's program might be at an end, a pleasant surprise. Elvis Tribute Week continues with a nod to a number of King clones. They all want to be the best imitation they can be. We know a lot about imitation around here in A Current Affair. We're going to see more of it in the fall. So with all due respect to Mr. Presley, we present some of the competitors in the International Elvis Imitator Contest. And with that, thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time, America. My name is Mike Albert, and I'm participating in the International Elvis Impersonator Contest. Elvis has always been, you know, a great star to me. And uh, I uh, found out that I could sound like him. Even if I were Elvis, uh, I would think it an honor that someone would care enough about me uh, to change his looks or even to, uh, you know, practice the voice to match it. I've seen some of the competition, but I haven't seen it all. Um, I'm going to leave, leave that up to the judges. Today he was still around. I told you it was dangerous. What songs, for instance, would Elvis be recording? How would he play in the new arena of music videos? So our guys thought about it, got the best Elvis impersonator in the world, let our own producer, Anthony Kaleka, see how those dreams could really come true. the saddest day Memphis, Tennessee had ever seen. And it was the saddest day in the history of rock and roll. August 16th, 1977, Elvis Presley was dead. There may have been contenders, and there may have been pretenders, but there was only one king, and Elvis was the one. In the 70s, as Elvis ruled across the country, he took many a popular song and made them his own. So we wondered what songs Elvis would have chosen had he lived into the 80s. We'd never know. Until now. Through the magic of a current affair, the magic of Elvis Presley has been brought to the brink of the 90s. Meet Mike Albert. He's not Elvis, but an incredible simulation. Mike Albert lives in Columbus, Ohio. He bought his house the year Elvis died. And believe it or not, he lives behind the Graceland Mall. It's right next to the Graceland Car Wash. No kidding. It's eerie. We discovered Mike performing during Elvis Week this summer in Memphis. And when we began this project, we knew Mike was the only man for the job. With New York's top session musicians backing him up, Mike Albert belted out the top songs of the 80s. Songs Elvis didn't live to hear, let alone sing. Music fit for a king. And that's not all. Baby, 
We put each song into the language of the 80s. Music videos. Each video telling a story reflecting Elvis's values. God, country, loyalty, romance, <laughs> and karate. Each day, we'll have another State of the Elvis music video, starring the man himself and some of his closest friends. So stay tuned. It's Elvis, 89, and he's better than ever. Sounds like sweeps month to me. Bruce Springsteen released this hit, I'm on Fire, back in 1984, more than seven years after Elvis Presley died. But if the king had lived, he certainly would have been challenging the boss of the arena of music videos. So here's our version of what we think Elvis's vision would have been. I can take you Pretty good. Our producer was Anthony Kaleka. That was a good until next time, America. <laughs> long enough to make music videos, to record the songs of today. One, two, one, two, three. Like
like this one. Mixed emotions. The latest hit from those old timers, the Rolling Stones. Sounds like just the type of song Elvis would take and make his own. So we did the rest. Until next time, America. Thank <laughs> you.